right? So I wanted to first show you before going over the individual bones disarticulated, I wanted to show you how they look when they are all articulating on an actual skeleton. So up here, um, right above your sternum, okay, you have what's called the clavicle and it moves from medial to lateral. And then at this lateral position, it articulates with your, basically you call this like your shoulder um, blade. Uh, so this is the scapula, all right? So this moves laterally and then posteriorly down your back, so posterior. Now these two um, uh, bones articulate to kind of form this little socket, this little um, uh, opening, okay? So that is where the humerus, which is this long bone, your upper arm, okay? That's where the humerus can fit into that little socket, okay? From the humerus, you then have your lower arm, your lower limbs. Um, uh, you have first your ulna, which is medial to the body, and then you have your radius, which is lateral to the body. And then, of course, those two bones articulate with the hand, which is the most um, posterior of the uh, upper limbs. When we are looking at the upper limb, we need to make sure that we're in anatomical position. So that means that your thumb is facing laterally and your pinky is facing uh, medially. That way we can ensure that the ulna is always in the correct position by being medially and the radius is always in the correct position by being laterally, okay? If you were to rotate it the other way, they would cross over and it would be incorrect, okay? So we wanna make sure the thumb is lateral and the pinky is medial. Okay, so now we are looking at the disarticulated bones. So I'm going to start um, uh, from the top, right? So we have the smallest of the bones. This is your clavicle. Some things you want to notice about it um, to identify it correctly is that it is flat on one end and then very round on the other end, okay? The flat end is the lateral end and the round end is the medial end. Um, when you feel on your sh own shoulder, right? It's flat. There's no bumps or anything. It just goes all the way across. That is because your clavicle is flat on the lateral side, okay? And then, of course, that la uh, lateral portion of the clavicle articulates with um, the spine or the shoulder blade, which we call the scapula, okay? So um, these extensions here are what help uh, create that socket, for the humerus, that ball and socket. That's how your shoulder is able to move. So this whole portion needs to be lateral so that you can attach to your arm to um, the rest of the body. And then this large portion that's extending out, we actually call it the spine of the scapula, that has to be posterior. So when I actually am holding the bones, I always go like this. Okay, I'm holding the spine, it's posterior facing you and then all of my other extensions are facing lateral so that it can attach to my arm. Okay? So, it's then going to attach to the humerus, all right? So, of course, the humerus has that ball on the uh, superior portion of it. That ball is what goes into the socket, ball and socket. That's how we have a movable joint, okay? So this is the humerus. It has that, it kind of looks like a ping pong ball cut in half at the superior portion. And then it has a lot of divots and um, nooks and crannies and protrusions down here in the inferior portion. Another note is on the posterior side of the humerus. There's not as many divots. There's just this one large crater, okay? So we'll name that for the post lab, but just recognize that the posterior side of the humerus has that crazy divot, okay? Whereas the anterior side doesn't really have that, okay? Next we have the ulna. So remember the ulna always has to be the medial portion of the arm. So medial means facing the medial line of your body. So for the ulna, this is probably the trickiest to actually um, 
uh, side for the body, either left or right. But to make sure that it's in correct anatomical position, you want to look at the superior portion of the bone. It kind of makes a U, okay? So U for ulna, right? And then of course I said in the other video that anytime you see a U on the bones, a U indicates a notch, okay? So this notch has to be superior. Um, then we go to the inferior portion and we see this little thing kind of pointing upwards, okay? Well, it's actually pointing inferiorly, but when we hold it up, it's pointing up. Um, you want to make sure that that guy is actually what's facing medial. If that's on the medial side, then yes, this is going to be a right ulna. If it was over here, that guy would be facing lateral, and that would be incorrect. Okay, so make sure that this notch or the U is superior and that this little guy is facing medial. The last bone of the upper limbs are, is the radius. Okay, so this is uh, the lateral portion of uh, the lower arm. So you actually don't have to side it left or right, um, but to know which side is the superior side and which side is the inferior side, um, the superior is kind of looks like it has like a little cap, okay? It's very skinny at the top. And then it gets much thicker as it moves to the bottom of the arm, okay? So that thick portion is really what helps keep the hand connected to the uh, forearm, okay? So that's the radius. And then lastly, we have the hand, all right? Now, these bones are all very small and very intricate. So to go over this correctly, um, so you know how to label everything properly, I am going to switch over to uh, the chalkboard.